Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I have a lot of updates I want to give you, not only for these temperatures coming in. There's going to be some cold temperatures, also some very hot temperatures that's going to be coming in right after that because of this pattern we're going into. Plus, the severe weather. We have tornadoes today, tomorrow. We have a lot of severe weather coming in, plus two stronger storms coming back to back right after that. Plus, I have your latest tropical update because I'm showing things are about to pop off maybe late August, maybe a little towards middle to late August, definitely in September. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. I will put links in the description below. That way it'll separate each section. That way you can go see what you need. I am counting on you guys to hit the like button, share this information, let others know what is coming their way. Thank you so much for your time. Now let's get into your information. Now a quick update on Lahaina. I'm not going to show videos like I did yesterday. It's just really depressing guys. Y'all remember what y'all saw yesterday. It was just unbelievable. But I have a quick update for you. Now unfortunately we have lost 55 people now and it's still rising. There's still people missing but there's still good stories of people being found. So stay positive. I'm sure we will find more. Now the Hawaiian governor Josh Green said the fires are likely to be the largest natural disaster in the state's history, and it just looks like a bomb went off. I know everybody's seen it. If you've never seen it before, go watch yesterday's video. I did have a lot of videos in there so you can see what's going on with this fire and what the impacts were. Links are in the description. It is at the beginning of the video. I'm not going to show that again today. But my heart does go out to everyone in Maui. God bless you and your families. This is just unbelievable. Now back at what's going on over here at the mainland, you can see for your outlook for today, you do have excessive heat advisories in all of this orange, and you have the excessive heat warning in all of this pink. Now this is going to lower down some, but this is also going to raise all the way up as we go into this next pattern soon. But remember, we do have cooler temperatures coming before that. Now for today, your heat indices are going all the way up bringing 110 degree heat indices to a lot of people for today, even over here into Florida. You have some cooler temperatures coming in tonight. We have even cooler coming later on, but then this heat's gonna come right back for tomorrow as we get these storms. And I'm showing a lot of chances for some high winds for tomorrow as this storm circles around and goes towards the southeast. So you gotta be aware this is gonna be overnight into the early morning hours, and you do have some strong heat in the seas for tomorrow as well. Now, as you go through Tuesday, your morning lows are gonna be really nice, gonna come all the way down to 60s, even gonna get the 50s. And as you go through Wednesday, it's still moving further to the east and south, and your morning lows are gonna be in the 60s as well, even down here towards the deep south. Now this pattern is going to continue all the way till next Friday, guys, bringing all these 50s and maybe some low 60s all the way into our U.S. And that is just going to keep continuing. You can see here in your AO, your Arctic Oscillation. But as we go from the 15th, really the 17th, all the way through the 20th, we still have that deep dip of cold air coming through. But you can also see on your latest PNA, your Pacific North American pattern, that we are going into a positive back into a negative. So this cold air coming towards the east side of the U.S. is going to move right back towards the west side of the U.S. for this cold air pocket that's coming through. And remember, this is how it is when you have a negative PNA. Your jet stream of cooler air is towards the west side of the U.S. while we go on a high ridge on the east side. And this is going to bring that big warm up after this. So as you go through Saturday, this cooler temperatures are coming down. So people are going to still be in the 50s, maybe the low 60s for the last time before this heat. And you can see the Northeast, mostly New England states, are going to be in the 40s to low 50s as this cold air comes down. But then it's going to switch because we're going to have negative PNA and all the cooler temperatures are going to be on the west side of the U.S. once we go into Sunday on the 20th bringing y'all 40s, even some 30s for the higher elevations. But remember, as you go through Sunday and your daytime heating kicks in, this is where we're going to that high ridge, and now your heat indices are going all the way up towards Dakotas and Minnesota again. A lot of hot temperatures coming all the way north in our country. And the 21st, when that cold air finishes coming through, it is going to be in the northwest again, negative PNA. You're going to be in the 40s, some 50s, even some 30s in the higher elevations once again. But with your daytime heating, it is going to bring those heat indices all the way up again. So next Sunday and Monday, a lot of hot temperatures rising up into our country. Why are you going to cool off along the West Coast? 
And it's going to stick around for the 22nd as well. A lot of strong heat in the seas staying in our country, guys. But it will start lowering down by the time you get to the 23rd. But still, the south and the southeast is going to remain in these strong heat indices the whole time. But it will go northern for a few days. Now, our latest tropical update, because they have upgraded our hurricane season again. Matter of fact, they have it at 60% chance of above normal, above average hurricane season. And this is coming very soon, guys. 2 to 5 major hurricanes, 6 to 11 hurricanes, and 14 to 21 named storms. And the NOAA provides these ranges with a 70% confidence. So as we look at our updates that we have when we look at our global tropics, you can see right here from August 16th to August 22nd, they are expecting a tropical cyclone to form. A good chance, not a great chance like you have over here in the eastern Pacific, but we have that strong wave coming through and it could form all the way towards the western MDR. Then once we go from the 23rd through the 29th, that tropical wave is going to carry a little further towards the southeast by the Bahamas. And this is where they're expecting formation to possibly form. So when you look at your latest chance for a tropical depression with the Ural, you can see in four to five days, all the way to the 16th, there is a weak chance of a tropical depression to form while there's a greater chance in the eastern Pacific, just like what I just showed you. And as you keep on going, you can see that next wave coming through going right towards where they're targeting all the way to the 20th for a chance for a tropical depression to form. Now, after this, it gets a little wishy-washy. It could get into the Atlantic. It could keep following towards the Bahamas, maybe towards our Gulf of Mexico. So when you look at the latest update on our MJO, our potential velocity anomaly of our lift, our sinking air, our favorable or unfavorable conditions, you can see all the way to the 15th, there is favorable conditions, not super strong like what's growing in the MDR after that, but we have favorable conditions all the way to the 16th. And that's in our region, a little to the west, but it is still in our Gulf. Then from the 17th all the way to the 21st, we do have favorable conditions, strong favorable conditions of something forming into our MDR, while right now, at that time, it will be unfavorable in our Gulf for a moment. But after that, this will travel to the west. So after this, you can see that it gets favorable from the 25th and on later in August. So this tropical wave is going to be moving west into our region. Now take this with a grain of salt. I will keep you updated. You can see this according to the Ural on the 20th that we have something forming in the eastern Pacific, something very strong. And we have a tropical wave strengthening up as it gets into the Caribbean. And the concerning part is it's on the northern side. I will show you why. And if you follow it through with the GFS, you can see that it goes right into the Gulf and forms up something late as it goes from the 25th through the 26th. So this path is being seen by the model data. But take this with a grain of salt, please, because this is still showing it will be later in August when it's our best potential. Because you can see the latest run on GFS, that not only one big storm in the Eastern Pacific, that could possibly be a second one going into the Eastern Pacific and not coming into our Gulf. I will keep you updated. It's just too far away to be accurate. But you can see on the long range with the Euro that after we go through this favorable conditions all the way to the end of August, we have a section of unfavorable conditions for a few days, but then it starts popping off. We get favorable conditions in the beginning of September and really strong favorable conditions. A lot of lift in our atmosphere, a lot of vorticity that could show up in September. And this is usually when we get our peak anyway. Because when you go to the ensembles, according to the GFS, starting on the 21st, you can see that multiple areas are showing favorable conditions of something to grow up either towards the Bahamas, the Western Caribbean, towards our Gulf of Mexico, or even into the Atlantic Ocean. Even our control member is showing something could form up in the Gulf something late. So there's multiple possibilities, guys. I will keep you updated. So when we look at the latest on MJO, our potential velocity anomaly, you can see right now we're sitting at favorable conditions, but it's really favorable in the Eastern Pacific. So I could easily go into the Eastern Pacific, not into our Gulf, guys. But this is where we're at right now. And you can see this here. So all the way to August 15th, we do have favorable conditions, but it is stronger in the Eastern Pacific. But as we go through the 20th, you can see how it moves in and we get favorable conditions all the way from Eastern Pacific all the way into the Eastern Caribbean. That sticks around for the 25th of August, 
all the way to the 30th of August, all the way into our MDR, all the way to the beginning of September. Then once you go towards the beginning of September, then it starts getting a little wishy-washy of neutral to favorable conditions. This will always update this last part right here. This is like a model data showing you 10, 15 days out. That always changes, guys. But you can see right here for the next week or two, we definitely have favorable conditions moving on in. So you can see the way it's looking right now when you look at your zonal winds. So everything is pushing everything into our Caribbean, but at the same time, if it's southern in our Caribbean, it will go out and be forced into the Pacific. If it is northern in our Caribbean, it will get shoved more northern and more better of a chance for it to come into our Gulf, maybe even way northern, come by the east coast. So this is what's steering it, our zonal winds, guys. Matter of fact, when you look at National Hurricane Center in 72 hours, you can see the chance for that tropical wave to form is weak. And it's not even showing a chance for a tropical wave to form, while the rest of these get steered to the west-southwest because of our steering conditions. This is the tropical wave we need to watch, whether it's going northern or southern. It's going to make a difference as far as strength as well. Because when you look at your overhead cam, when you take away all the zonal winds, the best area for a tropical cyclone to form is going to be in all this dark red. And if it stays northern in the Caribbean, this is your best area for something to form up rather than southern. So if it's northern, not only are the zonal winds going to be bringing it northern, because high pressure is going to weaken back and go more east into our Atlantic, it is going to swing around and it has a lot of chance to grow. Then as it gets closer, if it does come into our Caribbean, does come into our Gulf of Mexico, our best chance for a potential minimum central low pressure is going to be in this dark blue region. So Western Caribbean, all the way by the Bahamas, all the way into our Gulf of Mexico is where something could really strengthen up and get some potential rapid intensification. Because when you look at your ocean heat content, your deep ocean heat content, when a, when a storm strengthens up, starts swirling around and it gets that upwelling effect where it starts pulling up the cooler temperatures. You can see over here in the Caribbean on the northern side that the temperatures down below are very warm. So if it starts strengthening up on the northern half of the Caribbean, it will get rapid intensification because it's not cooler waters below. It is warm waters below and it'll keep feeding this storm. Now you can see all this with the Ural as well as our temperatures as well as these big storms is going to brew up. You can see everything from your tropopause. So as you have this Severe weather that's coming in for today, not really no cold air up aloft. There's cold air coming on these two big storms. We have our weak wave pushing through the Caribbean. That's going towards Central America. We have another one that's building up going towards the Bahamas. While we get a strong storm, our first strong storm, still moving in Sunday, Monday, maybe some of Tuesday, while that wave gets demolished over by the Bahamas. Then we get that next strong storm coming in for Thursday and Friday. Cold air aloft on both of these while you're getting your cooler temperatures in the south. So you can see this whole pattern come into fruition right here. Now yesterday we did have some wind damage reports down in Texas. We also had them over here by the Carolinas like I showed you. We had some flood reports. We also had five tornado reports. And all these tornadoes were in South Dakota yesterday. Now for today, you do have a big slight risk area and this is going to be for your winds, guys. You do have a tornado chance, a 2%. So I will show you the information so you can see exactly what is going on in the atmosphere. So far, this is your cities and states at risk for today. You also have the wind threat for today. Two big sections of 5% plus a big 15%. And I believe this could carry on a little bit further southern and eastern. There's some really big winds that's coming that way. But so far, here's your cities and states at risk for the wind threat for today. And you have the hail threat for today as well. In the same areas, but you can see the slight risk has changed. We have two different storm systems that will be forming up. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. The National Weather Service has it as severe thunderstorms capable of large hail, damage and gusts, and perhaps a tornado or two are possible across portions of the mid and upper Mississippi Valley and lower Missouri Valley areas today. Now you can see for today with your dew points, this puts a lot of particulates in your atmosphere. This helps get a lot of these thunderstorms going and you get a lot of 70s, even some 80s 
that comes all the way up, especially for this region right here. And this is where I'm seeing some strong winds as well. Now you can see for today, your temperatures for today, you have a lot of strong temperatures getting over 100, 105 for today. This is not your heat indices. This is just your temperatures. And this is going to help put a lot of heat in the atmosphere, get a lot of buoyancy, a lot of lift. But you can see with your heat indices that it's going to get very hot for today. 110 almost wide spread for today. And that is just going to be a very hot day that's coming for y'all. Not only the thunderstorms, not only the potential tornadoes, damaging winds, it's going to be a very hot day today. But all that heat is creating a lot of lift. You can see here with your cape, your potential energy, that you do have a lot of lift in the atmosphere for these storms to feed on, especially in this region right here. This is where I'm seeing a lot of storms building up later and bringing some strong winds with it. Again, all the way to five, almost 6,000 joules. Very strong potential energy, a lot of cape in the atmosphere, a lot of lift for these storms to grow. I'll give you all the updates I can. You can also see where your jet stream, this is bringing all these storms in this region. But this next storm that's coming, this is also going towards the northeast for tomorrow. But you can see this next storm coming in is still bringing a strong storm, still bringing a lot of winds with that as well. And what you do is you look on the east side of this, this is where it forms up all of the thunderstorms. Right after that, we have another one coming back to back. It is lowered even further into our U.S. Another strong storm coming right after that one. But you can see today that you do have a lot of strong storms going all the way from Iowa into Illinois, into Missouri, upstate Michigan. You also have some from Alabama going into Georgia. Then once you go later on into tonight, this is where it's going to be later night, overnight hours. These storms are going from Illinois and dropping down, so is the ones in Alabama. And once you go into this afternoon, these storms are going to move into northern Michigan. It's going to go further down Georgia, and some's going to grow for South Carolina as well, around Charleston, towards the coast, towards Myrtle Beach. That is going to go a little bit to northern Florida. But later tonight, this is going to be overnight storms. They're going to form again while it's rotating around, guys, going right over northern Missouri, going right into southern Illinois, and that gets some strong winds on those storms right there. You can see the bowing out feature as it goes into 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning, going into Kentucky, going into Tennessee all morning long. Then it drops into Alabama and Georgia. And you get the storms for, forming up for the northeast for your tornado threat for tomorrow. But you can see on your lower level winds, your 850 millibar winds, that you do have some winds for today, but it really picks up later this afternoon when you get the strong storms coming. And look at the intensity and the winds coming across Missouri, also dragging into southern Illinois. Now that's a lot of strong winds, damaging wind gusts, also a lot of winds going from the west to the east, from the west to the southeast, that could spin up a tornado for you guys. Just be aware that it's some very strong winds. It really intensifies early in the morning for Kentucky as that goes into Tennessee. A big nasty line of strong winds coming that way, and then it goes down towards the southeast as it weakens down, and you get the winds for tomorrow as well for the northeast. But this is a really strong line of winds that's passing through, especially at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's hard to see when it's zoomed out so far, but just looking a little closer, you can see as you go towards 4 a.m., it goes into southern Illinois. As you go through 6 a.m., it grows for western Kentucky, going right into Tennessee. A big nasty line of winds. And you can see that here. So as you go all afternoon long, all the way until midnight, all the way to 1 a.m., you get strong winds, 40, 50. I'll, I'll get closer for you. Even 60 towards Wisconsin, going into the Great Lakes. But look as you go for Kansas, going into Missouri, swings around to southern Illinois, goes into southern Missouri. Then it goes into Kentucky and Tennessee and goes down towards the southeast. A big nasty line of winds that's going to be coming with that as well. So it's going to be a very strong evening. Even showing hurricane force winds by the time you get to 9 o'clock tonight, passing through Kansas. So it starts in the panel of Texas, goes through Oklahoma, comes around through Kansas, while you're going from Iowa, going into Wisconsin, bringing 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts, high 60s at that. This is very powerful. This is showing hurricane force winds passing through northern Missouri by midnight, going through southern Missouri, southern Illinois, as you go through 5 o'clock in the morning, then going through Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Arkansas, 
dragging through Alabama and Georgia, even the Panhandle of Florida, while that next storm system starts coming in, bringing some strong winds as well. That is a nasty line of storms right there, guys, bringing a lot of winds, showing that those winds are a lot stronger than what's going to be passing through the northeast for tomorrow. Look at this. goes all the way down, even towards Florida, all the way into the Gulf. This is going to be a nasty line of storms with danger, damaging winds. I can't say this enough. This will create power outages. Now, for tomorrow, for Saturday, you do have a tornado threat as well. You have a 2% over here towards Ohio and going towards the Northeast. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. You also have a wind threat for tomorrow. You have 5%, but you have a big 15% as well. I will update you in the morning. I believe I will need to do a video just because of what I see with the tornadoes. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the wind threat for Saturday. Also, hail threat almost in the same areas and just as strong. So I will update you again in the morning, I do believe. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for tomorrow. Plus, give you another update on these big storms coming through. You've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I always give people at least a week or two heads up on these strong storms coming in. You can check my videos to back up what I say. You can see here with your vorticity. As you go Saturday into Sunday, you still have all this coming around, meeting up with all this going counterclockwise all together to one flow, and it forms up a strong storm for Sunday monday and possibly some of tuesday as well then we have that second one that's coming in right behind it and that one's showing even stronger guys remember that cold front is going to be a good thing it's going to bring all these cooler temperatures down to the south but it's also going to fuel these storms and you also can see with the euro by then that we start getting that tropical wave moving towards the bahamas towards the 18th while that grows up in the Pacific, and so far showing not really any formation coming out of that. I will keep you updated. But you can see how these storms are getting stronger and stronger. So as we get that first one, looking at our lower level winds, the first one does get some winds aloft, and we still get a second low pressure that I showed you yesterday, all this forming up into one, and then it strengthens up as it goes out through the Northeast. But then that second one comes in, and it's getting even stronger bring a lot more winds aloft. Look at that. That is going to bring a lot of severe weather, bring a nasty line of storms. And you can see with your lower level temperatures for today, we, we do have some pretty cool temperatures coming in with this pressure, not really a lot as that goes out through the northeast. But once we get our first strong storm, it has a lot of cool temperatures aloft. Still, I will keep you updated on everything. Believe me, I am on top of it. But it comes in really strong as it goes through Monday, and then the cold air stays with it all the way through. Then you have that second one coming in, and even colder air is coming through with that one. This is going to be two strong storms back to back, going stronger and stronger. So, so far, your latest update on the first strong storm for Sunday. You do still have chances for severe weather. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. And as it goes further east on Monday, you still have your 15% severe weather. Here's the cities and states at risk. I will keep you updated every day as we get close to this. Now, so far, National Weather Service does not have any updates on that second system, but I guarantee you they cannot ignore this. They're just waiting to see if this stays lower into the U.S. or if it's going to go on a high ridge and stay in Canada. So I will keep you updated as it comes through. But well, thank you so much for your time. Most of all, I appreciate every single one of you. Sorry the video was so long. I'd rather get this information out rather than just make money on, on everybody viewing this. You know how it goes. YouTube, they make it where your video's got to be at least eight minutes now just to be monetized. Instead of getting views, I'd rather get the data and information. Now, that's most important to me. So I do appreciate your time. Hopefully, you use the timestamps if you are tight with your time for today. But I appreciate your time. Now, I appreciate everyone that has donated also and everyone that has gotten the merch. Has been a lot of people. Thank you so much. It is going to help me feed a lot of people. All of it is going towards feeding people. That is so important. Not only with your friends, also with your enemies. Matter of fact, read a little something with you just to show you what I'm talking about. Romans 12, 16 through 21. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. 
If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. I don't know if you've been there before. I'm sure a lot of us have. I know I have. When you are hungry and you have no food in your belly and you're trying to provide for your family, it's just very hard to even think. So God bless every single one of you out there. Hope you have a very blessed day today. I do believe a severe weather video will most likely be needed for tomorrow. I will take a look at it in the morning and see how the tornadoes and the winds do look. I will let you know in the morning. But until then, <laughs> remember all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always blesses you every day of your life, you and your families, <laughs> forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great Friday, everybody.